My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. On my orders, coalition forces have begun striking selected targets of military importance to undermine Saddam Hussein's ability to wage war. Tonight, on my orders, America's armed forces began strikes against ISIL targets in Syria. President Francois Hollande says terrorists will not defeat France and is declaring war on terrorism. He's urging the U.S. and Russia to unite in the fight against ISIS. He meets with Secretary of State John Kerry Tuesday. We will search for them everywhere, wherever they are hiding. We will find them in any spot on the planet and we will punish them. Take a look at Syria. Take a look at the migration. Take a look at Libya. Take a look at Iraq. She gave us ISIS because her and Obama created this huge vacuum. And a small group came out of that huge vacuum because when they we should have never been in Iraq, but once we were there, we should have never got out the way they wanted to get out. She gave us ISIS, as sure as you are sitting there. And what happened is now ISIS is in 32 countries. And now I listen how she's going to get rid of ISIS. She's going to get rid of nobody. The footage you're seeing here is of a MOAB being dropped on a cave in Afghanistan, reportedly infested with ISIS fighters, dropped by President Trump. This was how much the most powerful man on earth cared about a cave filled with people from the Islamic State just a few years ago. This is a map of Africa from December 2020. The pitch black on the map represents the Islamic State. Currently, the Islamic State in Africa has a longer coastline than Syria. In early 2020, the Islamic State announced that they would be ceasing activity due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Though they seemingly backtracked on this when they began a naval invasion of Mozambique. A small terrorist organization as many put it before they rose to power, has now managed to invade a sovereign state, navally, and receive little to no attention from any world government or any media organization, apart from a few minor ones that are usually unnoticed. Now, just a couple weeks ago, ISIS has now captured the multiple small villages and towns it was besieging in Mozambique further inland from the coast. This received almost no attention at all. What was once at the forefront of the United States presidential debate is now reduced to news stories people share on Twitter for quick likes on odd stories. ISIS-backed militant groups Boko Haram and Al-Shabaab have only grown in presence in northern Africa and Somalia in recent years, with very little being done by the international community to combat them, especially since many of these countries fighting these Islamists already have other insurgencies and cannot feasibly deal with these other Islamic State-backed insurgencies. Lake Chad, which is vitally important to many North African countries, is almost completely controlled by the Islamic State. These Northern African countries were part of the French Empire for many years, and France still has monetary interest in them. They even control all of their currency. So it's no surprise that France has actually gotten involved somewhat, but unfortunately, their involvement involves drone strikes, which have only caused civilian casualties so far. On the Israeli-Gaza border in Egypt, ISIS controls a fair amount of coastal land, which is not too far from the Suez Canal. You would think that this would cause the international community to take interest, but in practice, it does not. This is a very deliberate move from the usually very sporadic Islamic State. They want to be in Africa because that's where they can thrive. That's where they can gain territory, gain land, gain power, gain population, gain reputation, 
without meeting any consequences from the West, from Russia, or any other state. The civil war in Syria has grown stagnant. The front between ISIS and the Iraqi government has also stagnated quite a bit. The Yemeni civil war is seemingly about to close with the Houthis making massive gains and Saudi Arabia ready for peace. Now that President Trump is out of office and ISIS in Afghanistan is eradicated, the Biden administration has mixed interests in the country and it's very unlikely that ISIS will re-arise there since they have interesting relations with the Taliban. As usual, the Islamic State has not shown any of their plans or claims in Africa, aside from some passing mentions. The only definitive claims from ISIS we have are from the Northern Caucasus, which are just reappropriated from Al-Qaeda. We know that they have plans in Libya, but the war in Libya has also grown stagnant after massive Turkish influence and governmental elections have caused a slowdown in fighting. Another thing of note is that despite the Islamic State funding insurgency groups in East Turkestan, China, China has not paid them any mind, even though they are affecting Chinese interests in East Africa. China has paid the war on terror very little mind, aside from minimal involvement in the war of Afghanistan after 9-11. You would also think that an Islamic extremist group would probably pay more attention to China, especially since there is an ongoing Muslim genocide in the country. Whether or not this is just ignorance or me jinxing it is up for fate to decide. In my opinion, probably one of the scariest things about this group is that they're unhinged. They don't have good strategy, they don't have good government, they don't have good planning. What they do have is brutality and the ability to get away with whatever they want without any real sort of punishment aside from open warfare, which to them is what they want. They can accomplish their goals even more effectively. Mozambique was the start of something that could develop into something far worse. Now that they have the capability for naval invasions in East Africa, there are plenty of other countries in Africa that could be vulnerable. It is very hard to predict where the Islamic State will be in the coming years and decades. They will very likely try to expand into the Congo and the rest of East Africa. Since East Africa is one of the um, best regions in Africa in terms of development and quality of life, they want to take out the heart of African development, destroy morale, create violence, create an environment where they can thrive. They may also want to expand in Northern Africa where the expanding desert gives them plenty of land where they thrive in, especially like they do in Iraq to this day, where the front lines are still stagnant. They very likely will not receive very much resistance from the outside world unless China decides to get involved. The Biden administration does not show much interest in the Islamic State at least so far. Russia is more concerned about Ukraine and their dwindling support from the population. This is where ISIS stands right now, and it looks like the destabilization caused by George Bush's invasion of Iraq may never really go away. The only way to limit its duration is to apply decisive force. And I assure you, this will not be a campaign of half measures, and we will accept no outcome but victory. My fellow citizens, the dangers to our country and the world will be overcome. We will pass through this time of peril 
and carry on the work of peace. We will defend our freedom. We will bring freedom to others. And we will prevail. May God bless our country and all who defend her.